What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Deep Dive Show. My name is Mpomo Taro. Our goal with this show is to bring you and I in proximity to the people and ideas that will show us that it is possible and it can be done and eventually help us achieve on our dreams and on our goals. Today, you have a special guest. You read the title. You saw the thumbnail. You know what time it is. We have one of Botswana's most exciting entrepreneurs. His name is Tobo Kereka. Welcome to the show, my brother. Thank you very much for having me. Era. All right. Um, it's been a long time coming. I've been following your content. Actually, there's some emails I sent to you about four years ago. I think I was in varsity there. Um, but you did reply to one. No wonder your name sounded familiar. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So you are a corporate lawyer. You own KK Cosmetics. You're yeah. the co-founder of Kino Custom Suits, Spanamfana, all these other things. Yeah. You do so much. But I want us to start from the very beginning. Word. That's actually where my, my brother-in-law comes from. Is it? Er. Right. So I wanted to run through the origins. You are a mixture. You've talked about this, you know, music and commerce make a lot of who you are. You yeah. also love sports too. Yeah. So talk to me about um, that, the making of who you are today. What kind of sparked the person we see today from the very, very beginning? Uh, let's take you back to my childhood. Mm. Uh, I think I come from a very diverse family. It's very commercially driven. I like saying uh, at some point my mom used to sell Tupperware. Yeah. Uh, my aunt is into uh, craftware, tuck shops and things like that. They also like music. And at any point in my family, when you're there and there's a get-together, there has to be music. Um, mm. I'm from Billing, so Splash, yeah, 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 and yeah. Guaito were a okay. big part of um, wh wh where I came from. But because I was from a very commercially driven and sound environment, um, I also found my way to uh, hustle from mm. a very young age. Mm. Uh, I was selling my quality when I was yeah, yeah. seven, eight years old. I'd go around to Mobile. I went to private school, but because of the environment I was living in, I found myself, you know, having to interact with people on a commercial basis. You know mm. what I mean? So entrepreneurship has always and still remains in my blood. My parents uh, and, and my aunts and uncles, but I can't do it in business with. I'm like, no, listen, it's just that I'm, I'm only doing something different. But if you think about it, this has always been what we do. Mm. It's been on in a the blood. Basis, it's been in the blood. At some point, my grandfather used to sell fire with Malapeng. So interacting with people, the art of selling has always been something that I saw on a daily basis. Mm. It's just that I, I took it a step further and I happened to have very diverse interests. So it's, it's who I am. As I grew up and I moved from Lobatse to Khaboroni, obviously I got exposed to uh, more things and more mm. people. That's when I also elevated in terms of my love for music and hip hop. Yeah. Shout out to General. I lived in phase four next to a guy called General uh, Patrick mm. Abamba. Mm -hmm. And he introduced me to Jay-Z. He introduced me to Wu-Tang Clan and a whole lot of yeah, uh, yeah. other rappers. And I joined Spite Rap Activity Jam. Spite Rap Activity, I met Melo, Mahosi. Yeah. And the rest is history. You know what I mean? Mm. When I was part of Mahosi, that's when I came and met... Um, uh, Donald, he is one of the artist managers. Donald Noto happens to be my business partner here at Keno Custom Suits, at Keno Sense. Oh, so that's how you guys met? He was an artist manager. He okay. was my artist manager. Okay. When I was part of Mahosi. Eh. And uh, at some point when I was in varsity studying or reading for my law degree, I stayed with Donald and Cast. And uh, that's when I got to understand him better as a person and his interest in... In, in, in implementing, he's my implementer. Mm -hmm. I like thinking, he likes doing. Mm -hmm. So you get what I mean? So I like, yeah, I like thinking of strategy and he likes m making sure that things are done. Mm -hmm. So I understand his strengths, he understands mine. Uh, which is why most of my business ventures, because um, I still have an eight to five, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Uh, I think of business ideas and he makes sure that the business is get done. So mm. yeah, man, that's my background. And I try to squeeze it in as much time as I can to bring it to where I am right now. Yeah. Uh, I love business. I love, sol I love solving problems at uh, 
which would somewhat empower me financially. Sure. But I always make sure For that sure. what I venture into uh, in, in entrepreneur-wise is something that I'm very passionate about. Look at all my hustles right now, all my businesses. Mm. Uh, I'm into suits. I like looking good. For sure. But one reason or one thing that accelerated me towards... Uh, lawyers wear suits. Lawyers wear suits. But I couldn't get suits that fit me because I'm, I'm uh -huh. a short dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I... I tried to partner with some other tailors. I was like, guys, there's a there's a niche which I've identified. I'm not the only short lawyer. Yeah, they yeah. like looking good because, you know, image matters. That's sure. our tagline in the channel, by yeah. the way. But uh, the guys turned me down and I was like, uh, Donald, I've got an idea. Let's, let's get into suits. There's mm. a market. And uh, I was sure of the market. Lawyers. Mm. Yeah, so because of the suits. And then as years went by, we studied the market, we, 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 we went on to ladies mm. and then the kennel brand somewhat became established. Then a lot of players came in in yeah. the suit market yeah. and we had to, you know, diversify. For sure. Hence kennel sense, hence kennel corporate and the other the stuff water. that we do. The water, yeah. Mm. yeah. So <clears throat> it's, it's interesting how you also came into this because you, you were corporate you are corporate. I still am. You still, you still I actually are corporate, started off yeah. in private practice. Hey. Yeah, for like three, four years, I, I went to court. Mm. But my dream as, an, as a lawyer has always been to go corporate because I love business. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to apply what I learned in private practice in both corporate lawyering as well as in my, in my businesses. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it's of great benefit. Mm. Yeah, Because many people, um, I think there's something also talked about all these things that you were doing. Yeah. And people think, ah, how does this man find time? How does he make sure that he prioritizes all the other important things in his life? <laughs> Talk to me about that. How are, you able, how are you able to make sure that, first of all, you don't burn out? Yeah. Second of all, you also, I don't know, <laughs> you make sure that you feed each of them somehow accordingly and make sure that also, as a person also, you also do some of the fun things you like to do. Right. Yeah. Basically, how do I create the balance yeah. or find, find the balance? For I think sure. uh, I like being very frank with people and say balance is an illusion. It doesn't happen. It's just a matter of what, what you prioritize on my life. Eh? Mm. Uh, my day starts off at 4.30 in the morning. I'm off the gym. My health is it, it's a priority, priority in my life. So I always make sure. I've been training since 2010, 2011. And I always make sure that wherever I go, whether I'm traveling or doing whatever, you know, I train. Health is a very critical thing. I always say I don't want to be rich and not be able to enjoy For whatever sure. it is that I have because of some ailment. For 30, how, long do you, how long do you work on? For an hour. For I'm very hour. optimal. I don't get people who are in the gym for like two to three hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know what they'll be doing up in there. Yeah. But, but then again, because of a time constraints. So my workout is weight training. Sometimes I do cardio. Sometimes I go running mm. and all that stuff. Yeah. So 4.35, I'm in the gym. 6, I'm out. Get ready for work. Sometimes it's much earlier than 4.30, no lie, cause depending on how pressing it is. I'm up at 3.30, yeah. push it till 4.30 and then gym. Mm. But then from there, it's work, work. Sometimes I have to work before work and then go to the eight to five over lunch, maybe put in a meeting when I knock off from the eight to five, which is also very demanding by the mm. way, then I have to put in the other work. Uh, I, uh, I work through teams, mm -hmm. not MS teams as in I have teams yeah, of yeah, yeah, people yeah. that I that yeah, yeah. That report or okay. I don't micromanage, but I like knowing what's going on. Yes. Yeah, what happened here? Mm -hmm. The report there, what's happening there? Set up a meeting or two, get home, be with the family, and then push in a bit of work. I try, I try to sleep the normal recommended hours. Which is seven hours. Seven hours seven is too long, long for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I sleep. My, my body wakes up after six. No matter how tired I am, after six hours of sleep, my body wakes up and mm -hmm. I, I start thinking, even when I'm not physically up mm -hmm. but I'm not even gonna lie it's it's very hectic I work maybe six days out of seven and I try rest on Sundays in most cases hmm. yeah all right Beautiful. but I, I I do burn out I'm not even gonna lie I yeah. burn out but I I try rest you try to rest as recommended by my doctor I try rest you have to yeah you have I have to. to you have to rest is also yeah. you know you investing in your health for sure so it's very critical yeah for sure. all right we're gonna pause here for a break we'll be back with Tobo Kiraka 
Welcome back everybody, welcome to the Deep Dive Show. We're here with Tobo Geraga. Tobo, we're getting into rapid fire. Is that why you didn't give me a show prep? <laughs> For sure. Because oh, these are the random. Yeah. I mean, so that you don't, you don't come practice. Oh. Yeah. Right. So, question number one. Um, who do you call when you have bad news? Like, the, like terrible. Apart from, apart from your wife, who do you call? Call? Yes. Like Call who do you talk to the moment the moment you have bad news? Like today was devastating. Oh, you mean like when I had like a terrible day yeah, or whatever? Yeah. Or um Who do you talk to first? Hey man, I'm 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 a strange individual. I talk to myself, eh? <laughs> I, I introspect like, a lot. I have but yeah, who would that one person be? I have like who you I, rent to. Like the moment stuff goes bad, you're like, dog. Are we too? If it's work, it'll be somebody at work. If it's business, it'll depend which business mm-hmm. and who, who I rely upon there. And yeah, but I've got people in in the entrepreneurship circle. By the way, entrepreneurship I hit yeah. them up. Yeah, it depends. Okay. So it depends which business, but mostly fellow colleagues in the in, in the in the business space. In the business. Yeah. All right. Are you liberty to give us names? Garab was here, Swiss. We were just talking about that just before I got on the yeah. show. Frank, Donald, mm-hmm. Melo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the circle. I see, I see. Okay. Um, question number two. What are you afraid of? Like deeply, what are you afraid of? Dying without achieving my dreams or leaving a legacy. Yeah. I think uh, everybody has a purpose. When you wake up, when I wake up in the morning, I always make sure that I am moving towards achieving my dreams. I'm moving in the, or oh, I've calibrated myself in the direction that God wants me to be in, and I'm pushing towards that. Mm. Which is why I respect time and what I do. Mm. If I didn't think this here show was important, I wouldn't be here. Mm. I believe it's moving me towards something which I want to be or achieve in my life because mm. I know somebody will be watching this show mm. and they get moved by what I'm going to say or what I'm doing and somehow we can complement each other either business wise or spiritual wise mm. or social wise so I just don't want to leave the earth without moving certain things mm. or achieving certain things beautiful Yeah. you know when you said it I had Shivers down my spine right now. Like I'm sure you, you say that you on said, every show. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> right now, I did. Word. I did because I have it written on my wall. Yeah, I've re- I have it written on my wall. It says, um, the definition of hell to me. Yeah, I know there's hell because I'm 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 biblical too. Spiritual. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm 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 Christian. Word. But the definition of hell for me is at my deathbed. Um, when I'm like thirty minutes out from. <laughs> Yeah. And then I look at my life and I'm like, the person I meet the person I could have become. Yeah. Versus the person I am right now. I feel like at that moment, that's when I'll go. Word. That's when it's gonna be like, you know. Yeah. Because I feel like that really yeah, it weighs down on me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. I was about yeah. to go deep, but I, I remember right in rapid fire. <laughs> so yeah. But it's similar. If you died today and you had the opportunity to come back and make one decision. What would it be? Hmm. One decision. I should, I should, okay, I, I believe in myself. Sometimes I get a sense of doubt in, 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 in some of my decisions. So I think I'd, 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 I'd want to tell myself to be more confident in, in what I do or what I say. I remember um, I used to go for mentorship sessions. I'd go with a pen and pad and uh, Gabriel Bins of Hot Wire was, I've never said this on record, but now I'm saying it, was, was my mentor. Mm-hmm. And I'd go with a pen and paper while I was working and I'd, I'd visit him. He's a very busy man, but I'd visit him with a pen and paper. And what he said to me one time is, um, be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid. He says, when you make a decision, think it through. Sheesh. Think it through before making that decision. Mm-hmm. But whatever decision you're going to take, therefore, be sure that you can back up yourself hmm. so if I'm to come back I need to tell Tobo Ore look you need to b- think the decisions through and be able to back yourself up because uh, doubt and fear 
creates you know a lot of uncertainty and you know you keep messing up certain things mm. so think things through tobo and make sure you're able to back yourself up be confident mm. yes sometimes i make certain decisions and then i look back and i'm like hey should i have really fired that person <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah all right all right um the next question i have for you is you are into the music you you are you are into music mm. still. i still am just not still. actively yeah, yeah. For you, who are your top three? This can be mm-hmm. across. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know where I'm going. It's probably the toughest question. Who are your top three in Botswana, all time? In Botswana, in bots, just bots, all time. And you're not specifying the genre, right? Not the can genre. Can we can we at least make it hip hop since I'm? <laughs> <laughs> not the That's genre. I mean, one. you 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 could be multi passionate in right in the music. Um, <laughs> Mellow, because I think. Number people. one, yeah. Is it, it does it have to be in order? Top, or we're just listing know. three. Let's but list you said three. Mellow, so I'm, look, I'm thinking it's number one. I'm only saying right, that because he's a top three. Up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think people ha- haven't heard what he's capable of because I've, <laughs> I've I've been in a group with him and I know him on a personal mm. and and musical level. People haven't heard him, so yeah, mm. Mellow, Frost, same thing. And Frost then Legato. I Frost Legato, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I would say mm. <sighs> I lost Samantha Moka or Possibina. Mm. Yeah. Hey, that tied at number three. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well obviously I had to stick, but yeah you know, man, that's not a fair question. Three! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. Word. All right. Um the last question on there is which artist would you sit down and take financial advice from in BW? <gasps> <laughs> I'm financial advice. Financial advice. Like you know, this this guy or this woman is gonna take me to the next level if I listen to what they have to say in terms of money. What about money? Making it or spending it? <laughs> <laughs> Nah, actually, advice. actually, like making it growing. Ah, uh, man, that's a tough one. I wonder what you were thinking when you came up with that question, bro. <laughs> I'd say V. V. Yeah, mm. because uh, he has diversified himself sure. well. Water, mm. uh, uh, energy drinks. Yeah. This and that. The so bread. yeah, yeah, the bread. Mm. Yeah, I'd say V. Mm. And it's I only fair to speak of V when you talk about financial diversity true. and using your brand to true. leverage onto other yeah. other avenues. Yeah. Also, how he has he has remained relevant, know, relevant for, the for so time. long. Yeah. yeah. And reinvented himself. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to a wrap of Rapid Fire. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to the Deep Dive Show. We're here with Tobo Gerakan. Now, Mr. Gerakan, I want us to get into Kino custom suits. Word. Um, your tagline is image matches. Because right? image matches. Because image matches. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, that is very bold. And there's so much behind that for yeah. sure. Um, I just want to, to, to come back to this in the sense that um, a lot of people say, if I'm just good, um, image doesn't really matter. How I look, how I show up doesn't really matter. There's people who are within that school of thought. Yeah. What would you say to people who talk like that? What's the first impression you got when I walked in? The man's in a suit. Yeah. Rolling a bag. Mm. Yeah. What did you think? Ah, oh, you look dapper. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like to create an impression before actually communicating with you. Uh, I want to win that mental battle before we start talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So before I start saying what I need to say, I need to communicate it by how I'm looking. So, yes, you need to back yourself up. With actual, with actual content. But my line of thinking has always been before you enter, as soon as you enter the room, they should feel. They should feel you. They should see you. And hence why we came up with Elevate by Keno Sense. They should also smell that, you know what? Success. Mm. Prosperity. Making it. Pushing. Elevating. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, I mean, plus I'm also a lawyer, so you need to yeah. create an impression. Yeah. You know, 
there are always memes going on around where if your lawyer comes dressed up like this, you're going to lose the case. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I need to create an impression yeah. before actually saying anything. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, <clears throat> there's so much I, I want to unpack. Um, but let me start here first. Yeah. Um, you talk about your, your, you say you don't call them employees, they're your team members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So talk to me about how, if I came to you, as an employee, and I wanted a raise. Yeah. How would I? How would I go about setting that up? Okay. Yeah. How would I talk to you? So, here's my my style of leadership. Number one, I don't like being called Mister Kerakang. Just call me Torbo, call me TK, call me Rakshan. Number one, I my sense of leadership is about instilling confidence in people. It's about instilling, you know. Uh, it's about inspiring people, making them, making them know that, look, I can actually be what this guy is. So uh, if you want to raise in my business, there's always a conversation I always have when, when, when we have a new team member. Mm. Unfortunately, the business seems to be growing as fast as I can. I, I usually work into Keno these days and I see people that I don't know and they happen to be like part of the stuff. But mm. I like having a conversation with them and saying, look, so what's your plan? Why are you here? Look, I know the position you've been hired for, but mm. what's the plan? You know, how do you, how are you going to fit in? How long are you here? How long do you plan on being here? Yeah, how yeah. long do you plan on being yeah. here? It's a legit question I mm. ask because uh, one thing I've noticed, uh, as a leader, as a business owner, the vision is very critical. True. And you need to make sure that you have people who plug into that main vision. Our vision is to be the best sweet maker in bots. Southern Africa and then Africa. Mm. So you need to make sure that you have people that, that is massive. Need, you need to dream big. I talked yeah. I talked about dreams earlier. Yeah. So when you want to raise and I like people who are very involved. My key thing is don't come with employee mentality when we work together. Mm. We both own the business. We just own it at different levels and we play different roles. True. I'm at the strategic level. You're at at, at the operational level. But because this is your business and you understand what you're supposed to do much better than I do, how are you going to earn what you're talking about? But not only getting to that amount, mm. how will the, benef uh, the business benefit? Mm. So make that money, but at the same time, let the business benefit. True. Do you get what I mean? Mm. So if you're the sales exec and your job is to find new business, mm. or worry, Hey, TK, I want to move from five to eight. Mm. What are you doing to move from five to eight? Are you mm. putting in the work? So they should come with a plan. Come with a okay, plan. It's about, okay, this is what I'm trying to do for Make the next six money. months. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, the, you know, uh, the way I'm trying to put it in a very politically correct yeah. way. Yeah. Some of our staff, which seems to be joining and a lot of businesses across not only Mokeno they just come in and want the money mm. ah no the business is doing well no pay me look are you making what, you're, what you say you're worth prove your worth it's just as simple as that mm. yeah alright beautiful 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 now <clears throat> I'm also very interested from a personal level yeah what are what are the problems that a man of your caliber is dealing with right now Huh. It can be business, it can be personal, anything. What is what are the problems that you're right. dealing with right now? Okay. Because I think that people just look at you and they think, and they think this guy has okay, this guy was sharp. Out. He has made no, it. He has, he, has, he has arrived. Yeah, I think but, we talked about this off air, man. Everybody yeah, yeah. has what they struggle with in, sure. in, in in their own either big or little circle. Entrepreneur wise, I'd say managing people is a very big problem that a lot of SMEs face mobile mm. Yeah. Managing people, managing business, businesses and, and leadership in general. <clears throat> I remember I, 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 I spoke to a certain consultant that I know. I'm like, look, you need to, there's, there's an opportunity in creating strategies for SMEs mobile Tswana because as long as I've got an idea, I want to start the deep dive show. Uh, I'm passionate about it. I've got the team. You just dive in without a strategy, without a plan, sure. without a vision, without values, without 
KPIs? How do you know you're actually working? So managing teams and managing people is one thing that, you know, gives me sleepless nights personally. Mm. That's from an entrepreneur perspective. And I can go about this all day. There's a reason, I think that's the main reason why small businesses and bots fail. Mm, mm. Look, you can be passionate, you can have the money, you can have the team, but if you don't have the plan, you're not going to go anywhere. Mm. This is why I, I just said our vision is to be the best in bots. Mm. Put a timeline to it and then work backwards. Mm. What are you doing to be the best in bots? What are you doing to be the best in Southern Africa, to be the best in Africa? You get what I mean? For sure. What, are, what do you have in place that shows you that you're moving in the right trajectory? Mm. Are you gauging performance? The people you're with, are they actually putting in the work? Yeah. Mm. And then on a personal note, I'd say, um, because my, my fatigue sometimes gets the best of me. Mm. So I think I need to uh, always sit down as, as Majida, which is why I came up with Spanam Fana sessions. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? Spanam Fana was for us to open up as Majida and just talk about issues which, were not really, which relate to us. Expectations as a, of, of a guy mm. in 2022 in a relationship, at work, what that you mm. know, single fathers and things like that. We're expected to be macho and not crumble. Mm. But I know a lot of dudes right now that are going through the most, either business-wise, hustle-wise and relationship-wise, so back to the question, what I would say, uh, I think I should start therapy. Yeah. Mm. Not because there's, there's anything wrong with me per se, but sometimes you need a platform where you, where you can always just air what's in your mind, what's your mind? air what's in your head, because mm. my mind is always thinking 24-7. I'm mm. already thinking what I'm going to do after this show. Mm. And it's not healthy to be thinking like that. It's not... Consistently. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Much as we always say, you know, you need to work hard, you need to push, you need to hustle, you need to rest. Mm. <laughs> you, you, I, I go to gym because I, I, I talked about being healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm always learning and, 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 and reading and researching because mm. I, I need to learn. But how's, how's your spirit? You have to recuperate. You know, you know, I'll shop away and I as an out So yeah, mm. we need to talk, we need to have platforms whereby we talk to each other as, as my G. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for that. And I thank you for also talking about therapy because I think the thought of therapy scares a lot of people. Yeah. They're like, hey, hurare. How sharp? Hurare, it's hit the fan now. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 oh. No, man. Mm. Let's, it's a mm. platform where you can air without being judged. Mm. You know, talking to somebody mm. and just, you know, gauging how you are. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome, awesome. We're going to pause here for a break. We'll be back with Tom Geraka. Yeah. Welcome back everybody to the Deep Dive Show. We're here with Tom Geraka. And if you've watched this episode up to this far, definitely drop a like, comment on your biggest takeaway, and consider subscribing to the channel. Um, Mr. Geraka. They must subscribe, not consider. Amen. Okay. <laughs> for sure. Be, for be, sure. Be, 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 be intentional. They must be subscribe. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm very curious to know, you growing up, go to my question is twofold. How were you sizing up your peers? Because you were in sports, you were in music, school too. There's a lot of um, challenge. There's a lot of competition. How were you sizing up your peers Okay, this is what I need to do to improve. This is what I need. How are you sizing up your peers then and now? Yeah. And yeah, let's just start with that one. Yeah, let's start with that one. Mm. Um, I think growing up, I've always been a very ambitious kid. For hmm? sure. At my fondest memory of uh, starting up my label was at like maybe 12, 13 years. Uh, my cousin had come back from the States and he bought me a little Bow Wow CD. I forgot mm -hmm. what the album was called. And I listened to Bow Wow and I, I'm like, okay, this guy is my age and he's already singing. Why can't I do this? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I remember one time uh, walking Kolobate just by... <laughs> I remember yeah. one time walking... And I'm thinking, look, one day I'm going to have my own clothing line. That's how old how were you? I was 13. 
I've always, I've always been that different kid with ambition. And I'd tell my other friends, look, hey, I'm going to be on TV one day. Mm. I'm going to be famous. And I remember I'd tell my mom all this stuff. She'd be like, hey, no, what's the anime see, man? As, hey. as long as you get your education yeah. going, it's all right. Yeah. It's all right. So I wouldn't gauge myself or compete per se. I'll mm. just focus on what I wanted to be. Mm. And this is something that I still carry on till now. Mm. It's about the vision. Mm. It's about the journey. It's about whether what I do on a daily contributes to what I want to achieve in the future. Awesome. So, oh, I'm always about putting in the work. Awesome. Showing up and putting in the work, yeah. Mm. So talk to me about this now. Because I think um, you're married, you're in business, you have partners, yeah. you have all this. What is your... I think I asked my, my parents this question. Yeah. Just about... Um, a week back because I, I've watched that marriage. I've never heard my mom or my dad raise that voice to each other. It's yeah. been almost 30 years. And I asked them this question, which I want to ask you now. What is your decision-making framework when you're making the tough decisions? Like who to get in business with, Ooh. who to marry, what product to add <sighs> to, to <marry>. this, <laughs> services, <laughs> all diligence. these things. <laughs> yeah. um, much as you can read and come across a formula and things like that. Understand yourself. I say that. Understand whoever it is you want to be with, whether it's in a relationship or whether or, or in a relationship, whether it's, you know, personal or, or, or professional or business or whatever. Mm. The most important thing is also knowing the other person. Mm. I gave you a background, Gary. It was easy, easy to get into business with, with, with Donald because... Yeah, because um, Interacted before. We interacted before and I, he's good at managing people. Mm. But most of the time, due diligence is very critical. Mm. But most importantly for me, it's that, it's that hunch. Mm. Yeah. The gut feeling. The gut feeling. You know, sometimes I can't scientifically point out what is wrong. You tick all the boxes, mm. but something just tells me, no, nah, doesn't man, feel right. No, nah, don't do business with this guy. Don't do that transaction. Much as I won't go through with it and I'm hurt because of that, something always comes up that, 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 that points to me being right. Mm. So don't ignore your intuition. Don't ignore your sixth sense. Mm. It, it's very critical. It's very critical. Yeah. Awesome. So you can do all your due diligence. You can tick all the boxes, but don't ignore that. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. I'm also curious to know, um, because you are a husband yeah. and a lawyer too, what are your thoughts on prenups? I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer at home. Corporate lawyer. I'm not a lawyer at home, eh? I'm <laughs> just sure, a basic. For sure, yeah. for sure, yeah. for sure, for sure. I mean, because these, these, these are your fields. Yeah. And I think it's relevant to you. What are your thoughts on them? On a prenup. On prenups. Yeah. By the way, our law doesn't call it a prenup per se. It calls it an anti-nuptial contract. Anti? Anti-nuptial contract. Okay. Yeah, pre-nuptial contract. Yeah. All right. But... Uh, I wouldn't have a posi I'm not going to give you whether I'm in support or not in support, but I'm going to say, after identifying the person that you feel is the ideal partner, make sure that you're getting married for the right reasons. Mm. Having been a divorce lawyer for like three or four years myself, in most cases, one of the grounds, one of the, you know, one of the reasons why the marriage would have broken down irretrievably was unreasonable behavior or finances. Mm. Mismanagement of finances and, and, and money. Yeah, money is a very critical issue when it comes to uh, that holy mm. union. Mm. So sit down and discuss money. How are you going to use your money? Who brings in the money? So uh, much as you need to sit down when planning your business, you need to sit down and plan your money in a marriage. Mm. Yeah, because mm. those are two entities coming together. Yeah. Children get involved, mm. you purchase property, mm. purchase assets. How, how do you manage your money? How do you use it? Yeah, it's very critical. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. And you've, you've, you are, I mean, you're well known on socials. You are also well known as a person. I believe so. Actually, I know so mm. because I've, I've asked around too. Um, you purposefully don't... Um, you know, push your private life out there like that. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah. you're asking me questions about. <laughs> but yeah, no. Yeah, but 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 what are the reasons? 
uh, you you don't like to, you know, post my private post life. your private life and and that. I I like keeping my personal life, my personal life. Mm. I think one conversation I've had with um, with, with with my wife was that look. I don't want to be identified as Masadi Al Tob. I want to have my life on my own. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I mean? That's really? what she said. Yeah, that's what she said. All She's right. like, look, I understand who you are or what you are and what people perceive you as. But I'll say I'm a little bit more Tob. Hell, I leave that out there. Mm. But Lena, let me be who I want to be. Give me space for me to grow, develop myself, and be what I want to be. Mm. I don't want to always be having that cloud or me having the kids or, or, or having the kids have that cloud where they head or okay, no, give another trouble, treat them this way or don't treat them that way or whatever. Mm. So I don't want that for them. All right, I don't hide them in any way. Mm. I just do, I just choose not to put them on certain platforms. Mm-hmm. But yeah, all right, they're, they're they're part of who I am. So you also. I mean, because also even if you you kind of make sure you don't do that, maybe other people will kind of push it out like that. How do you make sure that it remains private? I think what you need to understand is, um, I give a heat. I'm not hiding them. Mm. So if we're at a family event and people are taking pictures and I'm there with them, that's all that's well okay. and good, yeah. Mm. But I don't purposefully put them on my Facebook page or my Twitters or whatever and say father or whatever, whatever. No, mm. no, 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 no. Mm. It's very different when somebody else does it. Mm. Yeah. I won't go there and say, hey, but I made it clear at the school though that look, <laughs> because they use my name and surname and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, my son is something, something. Mm. Yeah. But I made it clear at the school, please run certain decisions when it comes to pub- publishing their pictures and, and stuff through me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I see awesome. it as a, a level of protection on them because mm. of the life that I chose and I live. Mm. Yeah. Dope. So you are. <laughs> um, there's a lot. Let me put it this way. In. Kure as a person, mm-hmm. as a human being, right? You are very ambitious, right? You definitely draw inspiration from a lot of people, yeah. right? But as a human being, we have inspiration. We have envy. How do you make sure that? these two don't cross each other. Where you look at this person, you're like, you know what, man, what you're doing is dope. I'm inspired by that, right? Because I don't, I don't really know how to put envy down and say this is envy, this is what, this is what. But everyone knows from a certain point that now it's starting to become like envy. It's, it's starting to become that thing. How do you manage that? Well, envy breeds bolosa. I'm not about that life. Hey. But I like, there are certain people that I, emulate to be like in life and, I, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and what they do or what they've achieved gives me the energy, fuels my fire to say, look, I want to see myself being in this position and achieving the same thing. Mm. So, yeah, I'm more about ambition and seeing how best I can push myself to get to a certain level. It's mm. about uh, what I aspire to be like. Mm. Yeah. All right. Not about envy. Dope, dope, dope. Yeah. Talk to me now about your circle. Um, who is in your circle and why? And how do you choose people that come into your circle? How do you see? How do you make sure that this is Motolo or Gamatla in my circle? Yeah. Let me put it like this. I know a lot of people. I've got many acquaintances and my line of businesses require me to know people. But when we speak about circle, my life is crafted in such a way that my social time is very really limited. I only get time on probably Saturdays in the evening or sun- Sundays is just family day. Mm. So the guys I went to school with are still the same guys I hang with right now. Mm. And there are not so many of them. Uh, my weekends are spent at the farm probably with family. Oh, hello, I want to chill with them. I take them and, 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 and then mm. we go and chill at the farm. Can I do that? Yeah. I like that you caught that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tobo harvest. So yeah. For sure. So guys, I went to one or two. I went to primary. There's, there's Melo, there's Lesh, and there's Donald. The good thing is Donald, we were friends and were still business, we were business mm. partners. So, uh, who I, comes I, I, in now? I, I, I love networking. Mm. But it doesn't mean I love making friends because mm. sometimes mm. I don't know if you mm. get the difference. Yeah, I love networking, but 
but my networking has 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 has, has its limits. Mm. I mean, you know, we can meet and understand each other that we have common interests and understanding, but it doesn't mean that you know over the weekend we're allowed to come through or whatever. Nah, man, mm. we only talk on the socials. Yeah. Let it end there. Yeah. But then you have my circle because of my private life. Mm. And the way I like keeping it that way, not many people say, know where my house is or come through or meet my kids, except family and stuff like that. So mm. I just like, I like keeping it that way. Mm. I'm a very private person, much as most of my life is in, in the public yeah. space. Yeah. So who comes in? I'm terrible at making new friends, eh? Yeah. I'm terrible at making new friends. But it doesn't mean I'm not approachable. We can chat, whatever. But For sure. the circle, last time I was with the circle was this Sunday, Reja Troha at my house. See what I mean? Mm. And it's still the same guy who I was with uh, probably the week before, whatever. So when, when I do go out... Let me, let me actually put it now. Let me put a twist to it. Yeah. Um, when is the time when you're like, you know what, um, this person is no longer serving me in my life or is no longer that, you know, has to look on the hour. When do you cut ties? When, when is that time when you're like, you know what? When I feel... Uh, you're not helping me grow or I'm not helping you grow. Mm -hmm. See, uh, I have personal visions too. Just as much as I've got business, you know, you've got a vision for the business, mm. I need to see where I, uh, I, I try and evaluate and plan what, okay, no, I need to be this kind of person in such, su such and such a time. And as I matured in life and started a family, you can't be you know, associating they don't necessarily support your character as, as a husband or as a father. So if you're not helping me grow as a person, as a husband, as a father, as a business person, there's no relevance. No. Nah. All right. All right. Um, now I want to go to the business now. Um, Kino, Kino custom suits. Right. Where do we see Kino Custom Suits five, six, seven years? Are we going to see it listed? Where are we going? Hmm. Good point. Uh, we're working on strategic locations in BW. We're trying to take it outside the country. We had a branch in Lusaka. We had hmm. to close it down. But I think being listed definitely is one of my overall aspirations in life. Mm. What you need to understand is um, we're likely to consolidate everything under the Kennel Group because right now we've got Kennel mm. Custom Suits, Kennel Corporate, Kennel Sense, and then there are other Kennel mm. brands that are coming up which I don't want to jinx by mentioning them yeah, now. Yeah. So if we are to list, it'll be just the Kennel Group or Kennel Holdings Company and then mm. we have all these subsidiaries under there. But uh, my dream is um, to spread our wings outside bots mm. and, you know, diversify into different markets and just grow generally, create jobs and take BW to where it needs to be. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So how do you also work as a business, as a businessman? Um, how do you work on your blind sides? How do you cultivate the areas that you feel like are making you weak or that kind of blindsiding you? How do you work on those? And how do you identify those in the first place? I think introspecting and knowing yourself are very critical things. Mm. Mm. You need to know how to manage yourself. I talked about that system that I have where I know where to step away sure, and stuff like sure. that. When I see that this conversation is going where I know I'm going to end up being pissed, mm. I move away, I walk away, or I change the topic. Mm. But I like empowering myself also. Spiritually, I've got a spiritual mentor. I pray. I talked about going to therapy because I really need to work on the emotional, the emotional being mm. of myself. But uh, intellectually, I love reading mm. and I love learning and I love school. I'm always, I'm, always, I'm always trying to find a course to study. Mm. What are you reading currently? Is it Shoe Dog? Yeah, I'm going over Shoe Dog again. Nike? Feel, yeah, Phil uh -huh. Nike, Shoe Dog. Mm -hmm. What are your top, what are, what are some of the best books you've read 
maybe in the past few years that have made a lot of, that have kind of turned the needle for you in business? Capitalist Nyega, Chico Nyani, number one. And oof, there's a book by Ricardo Sambla. I Ricardo Sambla, I forget what it's called. Maverick. Mm-hmm. Maverick. Mm-hmm. Maverick is about a guy who was just impl- implementing really radical systems in a business and turning it around. Mm. Yeah. And then I'm also, oof, I forgot the other one that I'm reading, but I, I, got, it, I got it quite recently. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah. The story of success. No. Or tipping point. Tip, yeah, yeah, tipping point. Tipping yeah. point. Yeah. Mm. And then, yeah. Those are the ones I can think yeah, of. You should, you should try the, the story of success. Oh, yeah? It's beautiful. I'll check it it's out. It's beautiful. And I think um, Men's Search for Why, Victor Frankl. Mm. I think those are kind of like my my strongest books. Now, in terms of Mobutuana, yeah. in terms of SMEs, in terms of business <clears throat> owners, what is that one thing that if you could come here and share it with one person and then they share it with everyone else, you would have been said? What is that one thing? What is that one change? If it would kind of change the landscape of how we do business. Hmm, I think it's just one thing is very difficult, man, because mm. a business, business is a combination of things. Mm. Business is, I always say it's like driving a car. You know, when you're driving a car, foot pedals, mm. gear, mirrors, and then somebody else, so you all need to be coordinating these things. But let me talk about this. I'll, I'll narrow it down to two. I'll change the rules a bit. Yeah. You know, strategy slash planning. Mm. We don't plan and beat up. Mm. We, we, just, we just vibe. It's an amity vibing. Mm. And when it gets tough, I've seen a lot of people, some have come to me, when it gets tough, we lack the discipline to show up. Discipline. On the hard days. Yeah. Planning. Mm. Because entrepreneurship will test you. Mm. And if you don't have the character, you won't survive. Mm. Because you will struggle much more than you actually make it. Mm. Mm. Do you have a story that you could share with us? Elon mm-hmm. had helped build a lot of that discipline and character inside of you. I can't think of a story right now. Mm. But I can tell you of some of the things that I've been through. Mm. Hella, say building Keno, for example. Mm. You know how they like making fun of motivational speakers and, yeah. and saying, I, yeah. I, I started my chicken farm with one feather <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We built Keno from a desk to over 20 employees. Mm. Legit, we were on a trip. I, we were going out of town. I forgot where. I think Nara Mankhodi Le Donald. And I told him, yo, I want to start a business. Mm. I'm going to call it TK Designs. Tobokerekang Designs, right? Mm. And he was an interested per se, but I somehow managed to get him in. Mm. And then he's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to become partners. The KE is for Kerekang. The mm. NO is for mm. Noto. Mm. And him being, he's a runner. He, he loves running. He loves, he gets bored, you know, he gets mm. bored of the serious stuff. Mm. And I respect him for that. It was a Saturday. Monday, he's like, yo, we have an office. I'm like, what? Yeah, we didn't even have a tailor. Mm. Yeah? We didn't, like, we had nothing. Mm. We didn't have a tailor. Are yo, we have an office that Monday. I'm like, okay, we do? Yeah, no, I love peace and food. be like, two minutes are on the desk. What year is this? Huh? Yeah. 2014. Mm. I'm like, no way. Okay, cool. And then it was actually in a module office in Jilidin. It was just a big building, and then we had a little office in the corner there. Mm. And then we got a little receptionist. No tailor, no nothing, no sewing machine. And we're in the, we're in the business of tailoring. So, just passion. <laughs> just, just passion and a dream. Had it been me, let me tell you what would have happened. One of my weaknesses, I overplan because I'm a perfectionist. Next time I a business plan and I got a plan. Don't know, don't Monday about air in office. Let's go. I'm like, we have an office. And I started thinking, we got an employee. And then we started talking to some of our tailor colleagues, helping us with little jobs and things like that. Mm. At some point, we, we started getting a little busy. And 
the, the idea has always been let's work on some of the weaknesses of what we see in the, in, in, in the tailoring space. Your wedding is going to be tomorrow and you still haven't gotten your wedding suit. We wanted to overcome that. The tailor, it's on a mechanic, but Mark, I'm blind. We wanted to overcome that. But the order, no, 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 no. At Keno, we can tell you what we're for. We just had a graduation special. It got so packed, we put out a notice. We're closed. Go elsewhere. So I'd rather disappoint you by not doing it. And I mentioned that. Rather than disappointing you by doing a really whack job. Yeah. Yeah. So we moved from that little office, we started getting orders, we started advertising. And now we were leveraging off the influence that we had in music. Or, oh, yeah, make fun of my music, but now I'm wearing a suit. Are you going to buy my suit? Yeah. Mm. I go into my lawyer friends and everybody in the lawyering business. Yeah, okay. So we started gaining momentum slowly. And what we were selling, we were selling... We didn't have a brand that time. We were building the brand. Keno was only becoming a brand maybe two or three years back. Mm. But we were selling a vision. Where, look, when you come to us, you wouldn't have to worry about standing on top of a machine while waiting for your suit to be made. Mm. No, 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 no. Mm. We were selling that, 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 that vision. And we moved from that little office. And then, by the grace of God, the guys we're sharing with in the office moved out. And we expanded. We got more tailors now. Yeah. So... Long story short, we started from a desk in a corner office to a workshop with over 15 tailors now, staff, mm. 10, yeah. Mm. We're looking at maybe a staff complement of 20, 25. Mm. That's just kennel custom suits. I'm not talking kennel corporate. There's another setup. Mm. Yeah. And it hasn't been easy. The problem is when it gets tough, a lot of us crumble under the pressure. Yeah. And it's not easy. Mm. COVID was a tough time. You know, suits were not a priority. Food was a priority. For sure. Look, I'm not going to look good and go hungry. I'm not mm. going to buy no suits. Nobody was getting married. Yeah. Nobody was going to work. No one was great. Hey, man, we had to get into those masks. Eh? Yeah, mm. we masks saved Keno. Mm. Yeah, we made a lot of masks. Unfortunately, we closed borders and... We're buying masks locally. So yeah, mm. that helped a lot. Mm. But that's also one thing it's about pivots, business. Yeah. yeah, you need to adapt. Mm. You need to adapt. And as much as you're going to have that vision, always be adaptive or okay, but what, what can you know keep the lights on as I'm still working towards that main vision? Mm. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Before I ask my last question, I want, to, I want you to give advice on fashion. Especially, let's, let's talk to men. I think, I think ladies do a better job than us you, you in terms think? of fashion. All right. I think just across the board. All right. I know I used to wear like purple and orange and green in one outfit. So I want you, I want you to kind of… There's nothing wrong with that depending on where you depending are. Depending on how yeah. I'm wearing it too. Yeah. You know? But if you were to look at the pictures, man. It, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, what is the… In terms of fashion, yeah, what you what would be your if a man wants to show up and look good and feel good, break it, run us through that process. Okay, other than getting a kennel suit, I always say this. <laughs> I always say this. Understand where you're going. Understand the setting. It's very critical. Mm. Every man has to have a blue suit, bro. Uh, I'm not bright. I think I have. At the top of my head right now, I probably have 12 suits. Blue, Blue suits. suits. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> what? No. <laughs> no, because... I don't even have bre- five suits. Single breast... I <laughs> should be charged with some sort of an offense. <laughs> single breast, double breast. I just changed the pleasers. <laughs> and then guys are like, oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Single Blue breast. suit... Gray suit. Blue suit, gray suit? Yeah. Brown, that's fine. You can Brown. mix it. There, there, there's a, there was actually a trending video that, so, that showed oh, how you can do Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, how yeah. you can do They mix and match and stuff like that. Mm. But always understand the context. So every time when people come over to the store and they say, Kebatla, Kebatla suit or whatever, mm. 
redistribute me sikwa tla suit always say look you need to understand something we can make you a suit specifically for the wedding and it's over yeah. and i always see guys but be the suit is a costume me sikudu officing and it bothers me a lot like look you need to the understand shiny ones. the shiny ones <laughs> yeah understand the context there's certain yeah. there's corporate wear mm. Mm. but there's a suit which can blend into both an event be it a wedding even at the office for so sure just that this is you know the shot one 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 show how I'm in right now but yeah. you can wear this at a wedding for example or even at work i always say that go for go for safe colors if you're going to use a suit uh, mm-hmm. for the office and uh, an event mm-hmm. but if you're going for an event for example the one that you're wearing right now the color mm-hmm. you, you're rocking right now yeah that's allowable thank you yeah if you're going for <laughs> <laughs> that means a lot <laughs> yeah but yeah. If personally um I'm a bit of a conservative when it comes to the 8 to 5. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You won't see me rocking an orange suit going to work. Mm. You won't see me wearing anything bright going to work. When it comes to Friday yeah. or Saturday, step out. And there's an event. Ah, no there. But then again, context is very important. Ahosama. Ahomarira. Mm. And then when you go to people's weddings, stop trying to outshine them, man. Eh? <laughs> Always, yeah, yeah stop yeah. trying to outshine the groom or whatever. Always try and understand if there's a theme or whatever. Don't be that old one out standing out. So it's always un- important to understand the context. Yes. But and and another critical thing is um dressing for your body. We we make custom suits. Right, mm. which means we tailor in accordance with your body contours, your size, and everything like that. For sure, certain fits complement certain body types, so it's important to understand those. Mm. When a double-breasted suit, similar, just it's unfortunate you won't see right now. Yeah, we can do we can do something so that it shows. Uh, I'm not gonna charge you like. for that. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for example, a double-breasted suit, ebata meluri le. Mm. But if you have a big body or whatever, it doesn't necessarily fit well. Mm. It needs to be tailored a certain way, which is why it's important for a jacket that thing. It will be tailored for your body. Mm. But if you're gonna get it off the shelf and we'll get a double-breasted suit, you'll see that the jacket will be there. Safari. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But always understand where you're going and uh, understand your fit. very critical and under, uh, understand your body. your body yeah awesome yeah awesome i think that's very key and it can be run across the board it can be run across yeah all right so my last question to you is how do you want to be remembered as tobo um that's a very difficult question for me but let me be that guy who never gave up easily and i was always pushing to achieve his dream and mm. uh, who was always pushing to be successful you're probably going to ask me what 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 to be successful is um success is it's quite subjective but for me the way i understand it i want to make a change a difference for myself my family my friends and the society that i operate in one day when batswana look back at me and what i've achieved they'd, they'd be inspired they'd be able to point to something that i did and actually made or caused the change yeah mm. beautiful Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tobo Kirakang. I hope you guys have gotten a lot of nuggets from this episode. And if you have liked it, like the episode. If you like the episode, and comment below on your biggest takeaway and definitely subscribe to the channel. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we'll meet same time, same place next week. Be great.